What's up everybody? Welcome back to half Ass Shop. I got this tea. I've got some oil. I've got my pre-filter. I've got a fuel filter. I've got the pet cock that goes to this cheap Chinese Amazon fuel tank. So today what we're going to do is what I told you that we were going to do. We are going to build the T system, fuel line system, for this so that uh, this old generator with my cobbled together Amazon fuel tank from China for, uh, you know, it's a seven gallon, it says, can draw from this tank and from the one and a half gallon tank or whatever that is on there at the same time so I can actually use both tanks and not wake up every hour to fill this generator. So, that being said, uh, I didn't bother to go out and buy an actual brass fitting or anything. I just found this one. So it's nylon. It should work just fine. So we're going to uh, tap in, get rid of this old junk. This new fuel line should be nice because it's not petrified. It'll actually move. Yay. So there's that. This isn't quite the same size, but it should work. We're hoping it works. Got a bunch of uh, um, fuel injection hose clamps, so those should take up any slack in the system because uh, this is a little bit larger and uh, it's not 30 years old. So, with that being said, let's get to it and knock it out. Okay, the idea is pretty simple here. We're going to tap into uh, this, this pet cock down here on the lower tank, the original tank. We're going to bring it on around. We're going to put this T in about the middle right there. Fuel line will go up to the pet cock on this upper tank. And I'll follow it right back down to the top of that T. We're going to bring it around. Fuel line is going to follow it and end up right there in the, in the barb fitting of the carburetor. And uh, that should allow us, oh, the, the fuel, the fuel uh, filter will go right here. Okay, so give us a little bit of extra length that we can use up at the top because they didn't have enough fuel line for me. So we're just going to stick that on there like that, put some hose clamps on it, and uh, away we go. So that'll be kind of how it's going to work. Uh, I'll, I might trim this down a little bit just because it doesn't need to be so high to, uh, to check the oil and whatnot. So I might cut that down some. But uh, that'll, that'll, that should do it for us. So we'll uh, switch over to the other camera and, and I'll show you the procedure. All right, first and foremost, we just have to uh, snip off the spring clamps here. Move those out of the way. It's uh, pretty easy. And then I have this tool, which if you don't have one of these AccuCut, um, they're sweet. Cut super quick. Look at that. The whole thing fell right off. So uh, these are, ew, gross. Uh, these, if you can find these, I don't know. These are Craftsman. I don't know if they make these anymore, but if you can find anything similar to these anywhere, buy them. They make cutting all of your hoses and everything super, super easy and sweet. So if you find those, get them. This old fuel filter, I don't know what the deal is with it. Um, but anyways, I, we're not going to be using that anymore. We're going to use this new plastic clear one so we can see how much crap comes through this old tank. Um, so we'll just get in here and wrench off this grody. Oil. I don't have hose pliers, but I wish I did. Let me grab a knife. I don't want to break those. Let me grab a knife. Go big or go home, they say. I found this uh, somewhere, so we're gonna try to get that off. But I don't think it's gonna work, so we're gonna use this old school crusty knife that I found in an old toolbox and just try to cut it off. If it'll work. Yes, sir. There we go. Glorious. She's off. Nasty. This stuff is like dinosaurs man ancient and it is deceased so my idea is to uh, have enough fuel line coming from this petcock up here 
come down, go into a T, come over to this carburetor, right in the eye. You can see that, right? That's the, that's the fitting. So normally, we just take this. I don't think I have enough. But the pet cock will go up underneath this tank. Come in here and see how much we've got left over. It's about bag of gamut. That. Let me uh, let me install this thing and we'll see. All right, petcock is screwed in. You're going to see if we have enough fuel line. So what we'll do is we'll just plug her in there and take kind of a rough measurement. That is about where it should be. Now if we try to tip it up, we know that now I don't have nearly enough. We don't have nearly enough fuel line. Let me get the prop rod out. Ew. Horrible spiders. So the prop rod is up. Um, and we are, it looks like we got about eight inches left that we can use. I don't love that, so I don't think that we have enough fuel line to even make this work. The T that we want to use is this quarter inch nylon T, so we're just going to jam her on in there. Let me put my, uh, these are the nice screw down terminal ones, or screw terminal, they're the screw down type of uh, fuel injection clamp, hose clamps. These are my favorite. These ring ones, least favorite. Spring clamps, um, they're okay, but I don't really like them. These though, these fuel injection ones, those are the legit ones right there. Those are awesome. So if you can get those, get those. I don't think I have any more fuel line anywhere. Uh, let me go check. This one is the barricade fuel hose quarter inch. So we will try. Stick it on the barb fitting, squish it all the way down. Fuel is an awesome lubricant for these hoses. It's nice and slippery. There we are. What do you think? You think I should paint all this stuff green like it was painted before? I don't think I there we are. Okay, we're good. So we'll cut her about right there. You know what? I'm going to bring you guys closer. There we are. We've got our Petcock tied in right there to our new fuel line. Our T. Our fuel line is tight. It ain't coming off. I don't think I did this one yet. But uh, we'll give her give her a little bit of love just for. No, she's she's tight. We're good. Find a nice spot to tap into. I think right about there. Oops, I got off. A little bit too close to the end. There we go. Love these though. Greatest. The greatest. Oh, almost forgot. Got this thing angling out. 
So our T here is angling up, which should go pretty good right into our fuel. Maybe it needs to go up, up a hair more. But we want it to have a little bit of an angle out to meet our, our pet cock up here. Let's angle you up. You can see that pet cock right there. Better, better for you to see it that way. We'll get it right on the end where that flare is. Crimp her down on that flare. She ain't going anywhere, guys. Yep, she ain't going anywhere. So, one more. Hope I have one more. All right, we're fresh out, fellers, so we don't have any more of the, um, um, what can you call it, the fuel injection fittings. So we're going to use the old worm screw one. I forgot what these are called. Let's see, what are they called? Clamp. That's what it's called. It's called a clamp. There's, a, there's an actual name for this type. I just don't know what it is anymore. Here we go, put some of my DNA on there. Probably should use something better, but it don't make no never mind. There we go. Can you see? Yeah, you can see, all right. Let me zoom in. Let me use the zoom feature. The zoom. Let's zoom in. There we go. Action shot. Action shot. The most exciting thing. run out of fuel. 
And then we'll see what happens. Drain the oil. Petcock works. Out of fuel. That's good. Time to drain the oil. It's always weird that these things never look like they're full, like ever. They always look like they're just, you know, empty. But apparently works. No leaks. Everything's good. All of it's dry. Nice and dry. No leaks anywhere. All good. Yeah, that's not even that's not even warm, really. So I mean, it's warm, but it's not hot, so this is going to be fine. Oil's all changed. Not too bad. Eh, a little gross, but overall, acceptable. But uh, she's got uh, a little over a quart of pen's oil in her now, so all good. Air filter fuel filter everything's clean and then I'm going to add because I don't know when the uh, once you get used again obviously it's a generator some stable just to the fuel uh, and this is so old it probably needs its own stable so let's see how we use it oh I guess we just pour it all in well everyone that's about all she wrote for uh the generator auxiliary fuel tank mod or whatever you want to call it installation uh, got her filled up pretty good got the stable in it it's a pretty pretty decent amount of fuel I'm not gonna fill it all the way up but she's about uh, you know almost full I don't know I was trying to think of a fraction to use eight tenths nine eight point seven five tenths whatever i don't know so uh she looks pretty good overall i'm pretty happy with how it turned out runs good everything is fine um no leaks which is really what i care about i messed up my uh my shop again because the brake lines blew out on that again so i had to bring it back in and Continue messing stuff up. So I can never get ahead in here. But anyway, back to this. $30.28 something on Amazon. Seven gallon tank. Some scrap steel. Uh, fuel line. All in all, I would say I've got um, $45 in it. Not including the oil change and the, you know, the maintenance stuff. But just uh, <clears throat> the actual mod itself. Yeah, I like it. Uh, a little bit, a little bit heavy to pick up, but you know, it works great. I mean, it's it's as everything I could hope that it it could have came out like. I mean, it's as good as I can, I can make it really, without going too overboard. But it's nice. It'll work. I can actually get some sleep now. The next time that we have a uh, power outage. So I'll be able to fill it up and then go to bed. So there you go. Have a good one. See you soon. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe and the bell and all that stuff too, please. It helps. Appreciate it. Bye.